Welcome to the Coaches Show. I'm Darren Joins, Williamson County Schools Athletic Director. We're talking to our coaches for tonight's game of the week for WCTV, Independence High School traveling to Franklin High School. We're going to talk with our girls coaches first. We've got Coach Rachel Shaw, not Han, Shaw <laughs> of Franklin High School, and Coach Tony Hill back with us again for the second straight week from Independence. Thank you guys for being here. Thanks for having us. Thank you. Coach Hill, uh, we talked about last time, third year at Independence High School, Coach Shaw, second year at Franklin, but obviously you've got a little Franklin history. Uh, you played at Franklin, assistant coach at Franklin, and Coach Hill let me know before the start of the show, I appreciate this coach with the, it's like doing my research for me. <laughs> coach Hill matched up with what, it was Coach Hahn then. Coach Ray, yeah. It was actually just Rachel Hahn then. <laughs> yeah. As a player, what can you tell us about coaching against Rachel Hahn? Well, she was a really good player. Uh, when I was at Centennial in, in 13 and 14, uh, she played at Franklin, and uh, uh, she was their go-to guy, uh, really good player, uh, uh, strong around the basket, uh, gritty, played hard. Um, she was as good as they got. Uh, she was a really tough player to, tough to match up with. Now you're just blowing smoke. <laughs> <laughs> now, Coach, uh, let me ask you this, because I know how the Battle of Franklin can get. Mm -hmm. Franklin Centennial. Uh, I mean, did you hit a big basket or do anything where you kind of looked at Coach Hill over there and were like... <laughs> I wish I was a little bit that grittier then. I was a little bit more just playing the game. But, uh, no, it was nothing, nothing too crazy. It was, you know, it was always a fun Franklin Centennial matchup. You know, you you we, we talk about this, and I, I feel this in a lot of the sports and what you're talking about, Coach Hill, with now you coach against each other, but you coach against her as a player. Uh, we got a pretty tight fraternity of coaches in our county because of those kind of things. Yeah, we really do. We, we've got a lot of really good coaches in our county, and, and uh, a lot of us have been around a while. Um, and, and you know, even the guys that that have not been within WCS coached in the periphery of our county. So we we knew them from team camp and and just you know maybe played them in the non district. So uh, we do have a lot of folks that are familiar with us, and we're familiar with them just from being around the game. Well, and this is something that uh, Tate and I have talked about a lot over the past few years. If you rewind several years ago. Now, there were some cases where a team might have played well here or there. But outside of this county, it was sort of Brentwood. And then every once in a while, somebody else would have a good team. Girls basketball. And I would even say in the last four and five years, and really dating back to your time at Centennial, has really been on the climb. Would you guys agree with that? Oh, 100%. This is a hard district to play in, for sure. And I think uh, it goes, I mean, just – good kids playing, just wanting to play and tough it out. And at any given night, it's anyone's game, which is fun and nerve wracking at the same time. But it's it's a testament to the hard coaches in this county and good players. Yeah. Coach, would you agree with that? The depth? Absolutely. You know, uh, I, I think it's been evident in the games that have been played so far in the district. There have been a lot of games that, you know, maybe have been closer than someone might anticipate. And and there maybe have been an outcome or two that you look at and go, wow, I, maybe I didn't see that coming. So uh, definitely, in my mind, one of the certainly most competitive districts in the state of Tennessee. Agreed. Uh, coach Shaw, let's talk about this a little bit. So you're, you're back year two as head coach, obviously. A lot of history there with Franklin. Was, you were an assistant a while. But let's face it, when you're the head coach, it changes it a little bit. It's yeah. a little bit different, yeah. A little uh, bit more pressure on you, but it's good. It's good pressure. Would you say year two? There's certain things that maybe you didn't think about before you became the head coach a little easier now this year? A hundred percent. And speaking about that, just being more comfortable with going into year two, I can't speak enough about how much I rely on my assistant coaches. Just us working together, it's been the same crew from last year. Um, just having that accountability with them too, they just help tremendously with them watching film, clipping stuff for me, or just – little plays or here and there, or little, even just words of encouragement, you know, just to keep you on. Because it's a long season. It's a long grind. Um, so definitely year two, feeling more comfortable in that aspect. Um, still learning. I will never stop learning. <laughs> There's so much to this game, and I learned it a lot last year, and then just more keeps growing and growing. Um, and it's fun. It's a good challenge every day. Coach Hill, uh, as a veteran coach, you know, one thing I've always noticed about your teams, if you have a game, maybe you don't play great, you have a tough loss, 
you seem to bounce back from it. Is it one of those deals? I think part of that's being a veteran coach. Sure. But isn't it real important in this league? Because if you get too high or too low after a win or loss, it's going to mess you up for the next game. No question. You gotta. You gotta have. Um, you know. You gotta turn the page and get on to the next one. You know. If you play well on Tuesday, that's wonderful. If you win, that's wonderful. But guess what? You gotta uh, lace them up and go hard and get ready for a really good team on Friday night too. So. Um, you know, you, you, we let them enjoy it a little while, but you know, we just go right back. You know, we'll go back to the film, go back to the weight room, go back to uh, the scouting, and it just, it just, uh, it, you know, you, we call it the grind. I mean, we, it is a grind. I mean, it's a Tuesday, Friday grind for uh, you know, 14 games, and and um, you know, you got to love it. You got to love it. <laughs> You better, because if you don't, it's going to be a long season. It's going to be a long couple months. You're in the wrong job then if you don't. Yeah. Uh, Coach Shaw, let me ask you this. Talking about your team a little bit, you enter league play 0-3. However, mm -hmm. you played Ravenwood. They're 1-2. and You've played Brentwood 3-0. and No one's filled 3-0. and So you've played two uh, of the three undefeated teams. So in a lot of ways, that 0-3 doesn't quite feel like an 0-3 if you were playing teams that won games. Yeah, no, it's definitely hard. Uh, first, starting off with Ravenwood, we came out um, really hard. Only we lost to them by nine. People come and say, "Oh, it's a close loss." Yeah, well, okay. <laughs> and then we play Brentwood, just a dominant team. Just they shot the ball, so they can shoot the ball well. Um, and that night, we just struggled from the perimeter. Um, and then turn around playing Nolensville Tuesday. Um, we matched up with them well again. Close loss by eight. Keep saying to the girls, "I mean, it's hard." to lose by so close, but it's a fight, um, eventually we'll be able to turn the corner, maybe tonight. But no, it's uh, it's hard. Those are good teams and well-coached teams, can't say that enough. Um, but I, I like those matchups again for round two. I think we've got more in the tank um, and it'll be a different story next time we see them. Coach Shaw, talk about, uh, and I'm sure Coach Hill would agree with me, Amy Elliott, uh, we're looking for her ID and making sure she's not 22 years old. <laughs> Seems like she's played forever. Super senior, if you will. No. Seems like she's played forever. Uh, she's sort of the heart and soul of the squad. Oh, yeah, 100%. Um, I mean, like I said, she's been playing since her freshman year. All four years been a starter for us. And that's a lot. It's a lot on her. Um, we ask a big toll from her every single day in practice and in games, and she continues to keep delivering. Um, I'd wish she would be a little bit more vocal in leadership, but that's always something that, you know, people got things we got to work on. Um, but she does a lot by her actions. When she takes the ball up the court, the pace that she tries to run with our team, um, it speaks a lot. And she gets a lot of the wheels turning and a lot of her offense going. Um, and without her, it would be a it would be a different story for sure. And then you've got Cecily Brandamore, who is not only one of the best young players in the league, but really just players, period, mm -hmm. who's doing a great job for you. No, she's phenomenal. She's been eating up the post lately. Um, she keeps trying to wander out in the perimeter. Keep the reminder, <laughs> hey, you a big girl. You stay on the box. Um, I think maybe in the next couple of years, we'll give her a little bit more of a leash to go on the perimeter. But for right now, she's been so dominant on the block for us. Um, we're just She's only a sophomore, so there's still a lot to learn and timing and pacing and um, trying to convince her that she's tall, but she can be strong too and just the, the momentum of taking the ball. Um, but no, the last couple of games, she's done well. A couple 20 point games. Tuesday, when we played Nolensville, she had 31 points. Um, so she's a force in the block, and we, we keep looking to feed her and just run from it. Coach Hill, your team one and two in district play, but again, you've played two of those undefeated teams, Paige and also Brentwood. Uh, we talked about your team last week. We talked about Fleming and C, the people that, pe that folks know about. Who's kind of been stepping up besides those two, especially when you're talking about these first three district games? Well, the other night, uh, Evie Nichols kind of broke out. She had 20, uh, and she did a, a great job slashing, going to the bucket, uh, you know, made some uh, really key shots for us. Um, you know, Riley Brooks on the interior, I think she went 12, 9, and uh, 4 blocks uh, the other night over at Page. So, you know, she certainly played well. and. You know, I, having Savannah C back in our lineup is so huge. She gives us another ball handler. She gives us another scorer. She gives us uh, another good defensive yeah. player. Uh, she may be our one, one of our certainly better uh, defensive players. Uh, smart, heady. Having her back in the lineup has been huge for our team. And, 
you know, those guys have, have really stepped up. Uh, you know, we've had some kids, uh, uh, you know, come off the bench. You know, I thought, you know, Addison McCain's given us some good minutes uh, at times. Um, so Kara, Kara Freeman's given us some good minutes at times. But, uh, you know, it seems like each night maybe a different kid steps up. Yeah. You know, we'll have a kid get 12, 9, and 4 one night, and the next night somebody else will get, you know, 15 and 5 steals or, or whatever. Uh, so it, it's nice to have uh, several kids that are capable of stepping up, and if we could just get them all to step up at the same time, it'd be great. <laughs> Coach, talk about this. I've always thought, and you guys may disagree with me on this, I always thought until you get to Christmas and maybe tournament play, uh, you're trying things. Hey, are we going to play this way? Am I going to play this line? And then it seems like the the bench gets a little shorter. Don't play as many people, that kind of thing. Coach Hill, let me ask you this. After three games in district play, has anything come up where you're like, you know what, I thought we were going to do it this way, but let's change this up a little bit. Not that you have to be specific yeah. about it, but if some, some things changed in the first three district games? Oh, no doubt. I, I think, you know, a lot of us get conservative uh, mm -hmm. in the in those games uh, instead of maybe going to to a, a changing defenses a little more often or or maybe trying a little something different offensively uh, you're gonna go with what's been successful for you uh, in recent times over Christmas and then in these first three games um, you know I, I do think and I, and I think we gain more confidence in uh, kids and we have a better idea of who can compete uh, in a, in a big time atmosphere. And, you know, these games are big time atmospheres. Uh, you know, uh, th this is not a situation that, uh, uh, is, is unchallenging. Uh, it's, it's a, it's a good atmosphere every night. Um, you know, the opponents are strong every night and, you know, we had 12 or so games to kind of figure out who we thought could be in the mix in district tournament play. And I think everybody kind of finds that about this time of year. Yeah. Hey, looking at the district, uh, we talked about Brentwood, Nolensville, Page, all 3-0. and oh, The only teams with a winning record in the district. I mean, after three games, there's, you know, a lot of people one and two. Uh, you got Indy, Ravenwood, Summit, all one and two, Centennial, Franklin, 0-3. Oh Again, I don't think you really know until everybody's mm -hmm. played each other once. Yeah. You, you know what I'm saying? Because right. you could have the, you've had the tougher part of the schedule early. Uh, but when I look at this, and you guys probably haven't thought anything about this, but as I look at it, five wins, and I feel fairly confident six, can get you a home first round game. Because top, top four teams host yeah. the first round. Right. If you get to six and eight, I think you got a shot, a pretty good shot to host that first round game. Am I right saying that? Yeah, I mean, I, I really haven't looked that deep into it, but, you know, I, I would hope uh, six or seven games would certainly get you in that top half, yeah. somewhere in that neighborhood. Uh, coach, same thing? Oh, yeah. No, I agree. And like you said, it's any night, anything can happen. So this district is tough. It's tricky. Um, so I think once we get more than halfway through, we'll have a better idea of things. But it, I don't think it's going to seal the deal. I think anything can happen in any given night. Like you said, the atmosphere, everything about it. Well, and you talk about – I know we talk about this a lot, boys and girls' side – how anyone on a given night can beat anyone else. Mm -hmm. uh, Centennial Brentwood on Tuesday night, I was at that game. Four minutes left in the second quarter, Centennial's up 17-15 on the girls' side. Now, Brentwood end up, because they, they can do it, right? They get, mm -hmm. they get hot, but that was a little tricky. Uh, most people think, oh, it'll be 30-2 to two at the end of the first quarter. It yeah. wasn't. Mm -hmm. It wasn't. It, so it, it is sort of an interesting deal regardless of record. Okay, let's talk about tonight's game a little bit. Again, we're talking about the WCTV game of the week, a 10-4A matchup in district play. Coach Shaw, what are some keys for you guys to get that first league win tonight? Definitely keys for us is to attack. Um, attack inside, inside out game is going to be huge for us. Um, taking care of the ball with ball pressure, especially with number 10 in. Um, he already mentioned her being a good defensive threat. Um, and then on defensive – in for us, we just got to stop the drive. Stop the drive, and then if there is a drive and we help, it's next rotation, next rotation. Um, I think if we do sound defense, we'll be all right. Coach Hill, two and two is what you're looking for after four games in league plays or play. What are some things you're looking for tonight? Well, the two things we put on the board every night are, number one, rebounding. We've got to win the rebounding battle. Uh, that's going to be huge for us, especially with Brandon Moore in there. We've got to make sure we win 
uh, the rebounding battle, and then we've got to keep our turnovers down. Uh, we've had a little problem taking care of the basketball lately, and we've got to shore that up and make sure we value each possession. So if we can do those two things, I think we'll be in a good position. Appreciate you being here today. I know you're busy. Looking forward to tonight's game. Thank, Thank you very you. much. We'll be right back to talk to the boys' coaches after this break. Welcome back to the Coaches Show. We're talking about the WCTV basketball game of the week. Tonight's game, Independence traveling to Franklin. We have our boys' coaches, Coach Jason Tigert from Franklin High School and Coach Mark Wilkins for the second time this year from Independence High School. Gentlemen, thank you for being here. Thanks for having us. Yeah, I appreciate it. Both teams coming off district wins on Tuesday night. The only undefeated teams on the boys' side. In fact, we'll get to this in a little bit, but I thought this was craziness. We've got an eight-team league, and after three games, only three teams have a winning record. I mean, it's, you know, I think people look at that Summit game, especially they beat Ravenwood on a last-second shot. It's one thing to say anyone can beat any team, but when they kind of do it, you know, because a lot of people, let's just face it, not you guys, but they're thinking, okay, Summit will probably finish last in the league. And then Ravenwood, who was, uh, what, a number one ranking at some point, and Summit beats them on a last-second shot. So there's proof anyone – you can, yeah. depending on the night. Right. Yeah, right. the parity of the league is is just unbelievable. This is, uh, you know, I've been doing this a long time, um, and it's by far the uh, the most balanced uh, from top to bottom uh, that I've uh, uh, participated in as far as district play goes. Mm -hmm. And you guys, I tell you what, uh, what I love about this and our conversation here today, and listen, I, I, people like being together. They like, but you guys really like us all being together. Like when we talk about it off camera, you're like, this is where it's at, man. It's, it's, it's Ada. And it's not because you're, you're both good. But if you were 0 and 3, I think you would both be saying it. Coach Wilkins, you like being together. No, I mean, I think that's how it should be. I mean, even last even the Tuesday night when we played Paige, we've played them the last couple of years and it hadn't had near the excitement and juice that it had, you know, that night. And so it, it just, it definitely, you know, as the saying goes, it, it means more. It really does when you're all together competing, um, let alone the travel. Everything is so much easier. We all share film so much easier together. You know, if there's ever inclement weather or anything like that, I know it's going to be handled together. You don't have to worry about it. What are they doing? What's their county going to say? And so, you know, just a no-brainer across the board, I think. Now, the competition's high, but, you know, what are we in this for? We're in it to compete and to compete at the highest level. And I think if we any of us can survive our district play in the region, I think it's, it's going to fare well for us because we've been in a lot of tight games. So it, it's been a lot of fun so far. And Coach Tiger, <clears throat> I think you would agree with this too. Uh, if you ask every player in the district and all the students, the fans that come to the games, you'd be hard-pressed to find one person who would say, no, we shouldn't be together. No, no, because it's, it's about the, the atmosphere. You know, you want, we want our, uh, you know, our student athletes to play in the best possible atmosphere yeah. they can, and you just simply can't replicate this. Um, and so it helps out that we've got good teams and, and, and quality coaches uh, across the board, but – uh, really strong senior class, yeah. uh, those types of things. But um, uh, it just the, the student sections, and in particular Franklin, for is just unbelievable. And so those those atmospheres will be memories that stay with these mm -hmm. these student athletes for forever. I like that you said especially Franklin's because you guys won't talk trash about each other, but the student section you might. So you're saying that the flagship is the elite, but I think Indy Nation would say something about that too, wouldn't it? Well, I mean, <laughs> I, I think there's no question that uh, from, from, from a football standpoint, basketball standpoint, the flagship is, has been representing for, for a long time. And win or lose, they're there and they've got her back. And yeah. um, they're just, uh, uh, they mean a lot to us. You like yours too? Oh, well, we definitely do. And, it, you know, and that's what was fun even last night you know, or Tuesday night with the playing was just them. You could hear them yelling back and forth, getting into it. Um, and I just, you know, see other places across the state. You don't see that very often. The students, you know, getting into it almost a little bit on the edge where the administrators have to get involved <laughs> a little bit. But, you know, that's what you want. Like he coach said, who doesn't want to play in that atmosphere? Who don't want to coach in that atmosphere where it just people care? Um, it just makes it a lot. We put as much time in, I know, as we would no matter where we coached. But to see it you know, come out and, and everyone else cares just as much is, is really special. You know, I thought it was fun, Coach Tiger, uh, uh, your interview on the game of the week on the radio last week, 
they interviewed you right on the court after you had that big overtime win. And it's one of the first things you said was how, how awesome is this? <laughs> yeah, it was. I mean, you get an overtime game versus Brentwood, and you got you look over and you've got a, a student section that is literally taking up half the gymnasium. you got a, 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 ba a band that's just playing away. And then you had great basketball. And, uh, and to come out with a W, I mean, it's just phenomenal. It's just fun. Yeah. Uh, it's just a lot of fun. Well, and Coach Wilkins, I heard you, uh, well, we talked about it. You talked about your centennial game. Yeah. And you said, I'm going to guess that that crowd and that atmosphere would outdo about 90% of Substack games. Oh, without a doubt. I mean, yeah, across the state, you know, that's the game that sends you down to the state tournament and you go into those gyms. And, that, you know, it's exciting. It's awesome to see those. But to last Friday night, you know, it was just a their district game, the second district game, and and I don't even know if you know Centennial and Franklin kind of they're the rival and us and Summit, so it was just another just random WCS game, but it was packed to the brim, and you know the, the students were special too. But I kind of caught myself looking as the national anthem was going on, it was just the adults in the crowd, you know, just so many people that were there and excited and watching it. It, it was you know something I'll remember the rest of my life. Well, I love it, and I appreciate you guys really. <clears throat> carrying the flag, so to speak, for loving it too, because it, it is so special. Uh, let's talk a little bit more about your team specifically. Coach Tigert, again, 3-0 and heading into tonight's matchup. Coach mentioned this uh, to me before the game, and, you know, I don't know what formulas and all that kind of stuff that you use, but take a look at both of you. Strength of schedule is going to be really high. Of course, you're playing each other as part of that because right. we've got a lot of good teams. Uh, but Coach Tigert, talk about uh, – when we talk about your team, uh, you got to start with Davis Long. I mean, obviously, I'm a big fan of, of Davis. Coach Wilkins gives me a hard time sometimes about how much I love Coach or no, no. Davis Long. He's the best player in the league. But uh, I didn't. It's not exactly what I said. <laughs> but, you know. uh, Davis is pretty special now. He is. He is. He's he, you know he's everything you you want for in a, uh, want want from in a, in a point guard. Uh, uh, he's a leader. Uh, he takes care of the basketball. He can score it. He defends. He makes everybody else around him better. Uh, you know, I've, I've been very fortunate over my career to coach very, very elite point guards um, um, at, at all three schools I've been at. And uh, Davis is as good as any of them. Yeah, he's yeah. special. He is. Talk about and, – and I'm so happy for this young man based on the injuries that he had. And I, I – maybe you knew, Coach. Uh, I can't imagine you thought he would play quite this well, this fast. That dude is playing great, Christian Brown. Uh, yes, uh, he is definitely a presence around the rim defensively. Um, I mention this in every interview because I think it is uh, very unique in the fact that he's able to alter shots or protect the rim in multiple ways, uh, not just simply uh, uh, by putting a hand up or block shots, but taking charges. And, and so when you have bigs that are willing to, um, you know, take hits as well, that's just another level of defensively around the paint. And so, uh, and he's really been rebounding the basketball well as, uh, as of late. I mean, I think he had 18 rebounds against Brentwood. Mm -hmm. um, I'm not sure. I haven't looked at the numbers from last night, but it was another big effort rebounding the basketball. He's averaging a double-double. And talking about that win uh, Tuesday night, 46-42 at Nolansville, uh, coach, it's interesting you mentioned that charge taken. Uh, uh, Troy Crane, assistant coach at Brentwood High School, that's one of the things he mentioned to me. He said he was talking about Christian. We were talking before the game Tuesday when they took on Centennial. He mentioned that, well, I can shout it, but he mentioned the charges too, which is uh, pretty special. Independence, again, 3-0, and uh, win on Tuesday night over Page High School. Coach, one thing I've noticed, and really probably your team too, Coach Tigert, honestly, but it seems to really stand out with your team, uh, you haven't had many games where three guys weren't in double figures. Yeah, I think that's, you know, I don't know if it's necessarily our emphasis, uh, but it definitely does help when we can have that spread out scoring. Um, you know, and I got to look at Jet Montgomery at that, you know, as kind of the, because he can take shots that are quote unquote bad shots and probably make a lot of them. Um, but he's had a, such a willingness to get, make the right play every time down the floor. Him and Tyler are kind of sharing that opportunity to, you know, to be our point guard together. And I think both of them are doing an awesome job of that. And Tylen does too. He's leading us an assist of just facilitating the ball and finding it. And I think they just have built such a trust for a Braden Buck shooting a three is just as good as anything. We can get that whole possession. And so they have such a willingness to, to do that to where we have those games. We have 13, 12, 16 points. I mean, Jet had 20 on, on Tuesday and I'm, you know, 
Coach Street and, and Paige, we've got to be excited about that because he's a great player. But, I, you know, the, the good thing for us was we had several other guys, two or three other guys, in double figures, 13, 14 points. Um, and it just helps us as a you know, coaching staff to know that we don't have to have just one person do it the whole time. And Coach Wilkins, with your team, uh, with the zone defense, not so much in our league, but some in our league, and maybe I don't, I don't anticipate this tonight. Uh, Coach Tiger probably won't tell us this. <laughs> But some of the teams you faced last year really wanted to kind of slow it down against the zone. You've right. changed the defense a little bit to increase those possessions. Yeah, you know, our kids want to play fast. You know, and sometimes the traditional thought is if you play a zone or a matchup zone, it kind of slows the game down. And, and so it kind of goes against our nature. And sometimes it's gotten us out of position in, in to where we've made it too easy on our opponents. So we just really worked on our guys about how we're going to still stay to our principles but also adjust to when those teams are holding the ball. And, you know, and, and it's um, something we hadn't do, done a lot necessarily yet because we have teams we played before Christmas, they love to play fast too. Um, but we know that ultimately to get what we want to get, we've got to be able to adjust to, you know, how other teams are playing. And so, um, you know, thankfully our guys have bought into that. <clears throat> District recap again, Franklin and Indy, both sitting at 3-0 and in the league. A Centennial, a team I watched on Tuesday night, and I go, Coach, you played them. I was very impressed with their team at 2-1. and one. Yeah. Then you've got Nolansville, Page, Ravenwood, Summit, all one and two, and then Brentwood, zero oh and three. So Brentwood, here's the team. <laughs> Look at the mid-state top ten that the Tennessee and does. They do a pretty good job. Mm -hmm. What they consider to be the large school ranking, mm -hmm. which is public and private, uh, Brentwood ranked in the top ten, and they're zero oh and three <laughs> in this league. Coach Tiger. Well, that's just like we talked about at the start of the interview. Um, that talks about how just deep the league is and and they're going to get wins they got yeah. they got a quality team they've added uh, a piece back from from florida that uh can really go <laughs> and so uh you know they're, they're going to have success uh that you won't see uh brent brentwood being over for very long no uh let me ask both of you this and i'll start with coach wilkins not you probably hadn't thought anything about <laughs> this. this is stuff i think about <laughs> so if i'm getting you on the spot you know just tell me what you think uh I think there's a scenario where three losses could win the league. Two or three, I think, wins it. Yeah, I, I don't know what that number will be, but I do know that we're three games in so far, and it has been – it feels like we've played 20 just because yeah. of how exhausting they've been and, you know, how much time and, and thought goes into it, you know, with our triple overtime with Centennial, you know. And so to see that we've got 11 more of these games coming our way, probably very similar, tough, tight games um, – it definitely could be. You know, it's one of those things where last year in our smaller league, we had to get – we were we had, you know, hadn't lost yet, thankfully, but we had to get to the very end because if we messed one or two games up, we had a team sitting there with one loss that was ready – we were tying. We were at the big coin flip. And so for this one, you know, there's going to be a little bit more of the – you know, you got to just kind of keep the marathon. got to keep going. kind of keep pressing for it. But, you know, it, it could be three or four losses. It, it, Coach Tiger and I talked about it off. Like, even the regular season, as important as it is, because you get to host that district quarterfinal game, the tournament's going to be just as nuts, you know. And so you want to put yourself in that great position, um, but you know, who the tournament could just flip it could flip all the way over because our, our league is so good. Coach, uh, two or three losses could theoretically win the league. Yeah, without question. Um, I, I think it, it, you've got to have a team that is focused on the game at hand. Mm -hmm. You can, there's no looking ahead, absolutely no looking ahead, and. Uh, um, you know, we could easily, you know, we were trailing late in, four, in each of the three games that we ended up winning, late, mm -hmm. very late. Um, so, you know, we could have been in easily in that 0-3 position as well. And uh, uh, you just you just got to lock in every night um, and, and worry about next week, next week. Let me ask you guys this, talking a little bit more about tonight's game again, WCTV, Basketball Game of the Week, District 10, 4A, uh, Independence traveling to Franklin. Been some pretty special games the past few years with, with your teams. And I, it's one of those things to me, and maybe I'm wrong about this, I think in certain matchups, style of play, players you have, certain teams when they play each other, it just fits. When y'all play, it just fits. Fits. I don't know what it is, but it fits. Agreed? Yeah. Well, we've had some some great matchups, yeah. I mean, without question. Uh, last year, um, you know, we one of those situations where we got to meet before district play down in Florida, and that was a lot of fun, and came back with the TV game. Um, and uh, yeah. just been tremendous matchups. Uh, we have tremendous respect for what 
Indy brings the table. They got great players. Coach Wilkins does a great job. So um, uh, it should be a lot of fun. Well, and of course, the irony of it all is that even uh, the three times we played, we're non-district every time last year, which is <laughs> baffling. But, you know, the, probably the best game out of all of them was the one at Florida. I mean, it was high score. And just as far as, like, the fans want to see, it wasn't the best for us. We didn't really enjoy it. But, uh, you know, just as far as watching the game, I think it may have gone into overtime. Mm-hmm. It was a high score in one. Um, and then, you know, we were fortunate to get them the next time. And then they came back and got us, you know, at the next. So it's just – it is. I think the, the, the kids are very similar. They play together outside of, you know, our season. And so um, there's there's no secrets, and it, it makes for a lot of a really high competition. Well, let me tell you, and again, I know you're just both hoping for a win, but as I look at tonight's matchup, I'm thinking this has a chance to be one of those where there's scoring and excitement, and from the get-go, both fan bases are just nuts. That's what I'm hoping. Well, I can <laughs> assure you the Frank, Franklin fan base will be into it, and I, yeah. I expect uh, the uh, Independence fan base to show up and, and be loud as well. So it should be, it's going to be a lot of fun. Give me a key for tonight, Coach Wilkins. You give me one thing, offense or defense. Well, it, it, I think it starts with Davis Long. We've got to somehow find a way just to slow him down. I mean, he's so good at scoring. He's so good at facilitating. We've got to somehow keep him out of the paint and just not let him – you know, pick apart what we're trying to do defensively. And we haven't done a great job of that. You know, last year they beat us twice because he was probably had 10, 11 assists on top of scoring as well. And so we've got to, got to do a great job of that. And then also, you know, we've got to hopefully just shoot the ball well. That always helps us. They have the softest rims in the state, and they usually take advantage of that. And so hopefully we can take advantage of that too. We've talked about that. Uh, but uh, it, it's, it's, it's going to be, I would assume, a, a high-scoring game. We've just got to try to limit and make them take tough shots. Coach Tiger? Defensive rebounding. Um, Indy always uh, hits the glass very hard. Uh, they're too good of a team uh, to give multiple opportunities, so we've got to rebound the basketball. Uh, number one priority. Gentlemen, looking forward to it. Thanks for being here. Appreciate it. All right. Thank you. Thank you for joining us for the Coaches Show. We'll see you next time. Thank you.